So we're back uh, with good news. Yeah. We have obtained all of our belongings. We sure have. Um, so we're doing a video about shipping household goods abroad. Um, of course, disclaimer, this can vary depending on what country you're going to, what shipping company you're using, just tons of different... A lot of variables. Yeah. So... But we're going to give you our experience. Right. Um, well, apologize, this might be a lengthy video. We might break it into two pieces, so bear with us. Mm -hmm. So the first question people have been asking us is why we decided to ship our belongings. Why not just sell all of our stuff, get some money in hand, and then start brand new in our new country. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the biggest reasons is uh, that we have a library of, of some size that we're pretty proud of. Yes. And we, so... I've always said, when Clint and I first started talking about moving abroad five, six years ago, when it was kind of just a pie-in-the-sky daydream, I said the only way that I would move is if I could afford to go back and visit family right. and if I could have all of my books. Right. Um, and it just so happens also that the place that we're moving to in Arequipa, Peru, is one of the best environments on the planet to keep books. It's right. really dry. And so, um, so we thought if we're going to bring our books, it makes sense that there's going to be space in the shipping container for other things. Right. Um, also, on a side note, for us moving to Peru, um, furniture and clothing costs a lot more here. Yeah. Um, we haven't quite seen or figured out if there are thrift stores um, because we did buy a lot of furniture, uh, tables, things like that from thrift stores. The, so. There are some used places, but the quality is right. much less than what you'd see in the States, for right. example. So we kind of weighed our, our needs and wants and decided to ship our belongings. Right. Um, so that's what that's what we did. Yep. Um, so the next thing we had to try to do is find a shipping company. Mm -hmm. um, we were kind of like fish out of water on this one, right. so it was a bit of a bumble. Um, literally, we Googled. The Google gods know all. So we found a website that I don't know how would you describe it. They you you put in kind of what your needs are, what your your origin and destination countries are, and then it basically takes your information and sends it to several shipping companies that do this kind of stuff. And so you get several quotes from multiple shipping companies. Right. So once we found a couple of possible companies that we were willing to go with based on very superficial quotes, right. um, we checked reviews for those companies, and we also checked the Better Business Bureau website to right. make sure that we weren't going to get screwed. Right. So um, with that... We chose our shipping company. Right. It was, I don't know. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. If someone else has a better way, please do that because, like I said, we I feel like we kind of bumbled through that step. But, but it, it did work. Yeah. It, it worked out. So. Um, so we ended up going with a company called RSS. Yep, they're out of Delaware. Um, we'll put their website in the description box below. Yep. Um, so after we found our company, we had to pack all of our stuff. Yep. Um, I will say that as we packed, we both got rid of quite a few things. Absolutely. Um, we took... We, we would definitely recommend that as a, yeah. as a blanket statement. If you're moving somewhere, even if you're moving across town, right. that's a good opportunity to kind of go through things and get rid right. of a couple things you know you're not going to use or haven't used in a while. And, and we did give quite a few bags and boxes full to the local thrift stores right. for people to, to use if they need. Yep. Um, so that being said... We are an abnormality because we have moved a lot um, just in our home city, a lot. So we became very organized in that way. Mm -hmm. um, most people think we're slightly crazy, but it's worked really <laughs> I kind of well. think we're slightly crazy. And I think it's helped us a lot in this process as well. Right. Um, so you have to have an inventory for your shipping company and your destination country. So we actually had been inventorying our stuff each move. We have an Excel spreadsheet. Yep. Um, Which works great for if you... If you put items in the, the different fields for the, the, the numbered box, you can just control F or find uh, the an item that you're looking for, and there it is right on the, the box number. It's pretty easy to use. Right. Um, and another thing we've also kind of upgraded to as we've moved around is using um, totes instead of boxes. Right. Um, I've had 
cardboard boxes break out from under me when I'm carrying stuff. It's right. They're not waterproof? No. So so we had a fair number of Rubbermaid or um, Sterilite plastic totes yep. um, to put our things in, and that was really helpful. Absolutely. Um, so those are things that we had done in the past. We just kind of had to amplify things for for this. Move. Right. Um, another thing we did is all of our linens and clothes, we got vacuum seal bags. Yep. Not only to save space, but also to keep things in, in good order. So yeah. um, going through different climates on the boat yeah. wouldn't affect, hopefully, wouldn't affect right. clothing and bedding, curtains, mm -hmm. towels. Yeah. So they they appear to be, now that we have everything in our possession, they appear to be right. in, in good order. And so. we shoved a lot of um, dryer sheets in yeah. along with the bags just right. to kind of keep things a little bit more fresh. because. Over, over time and distance and humidity in different places, things can get a little funky, so it's, it's a good idea to kind of uh, put some something in there to keep them fresh. Yeah. Um, we will insert footage of us packing um, so you can see the hilarity. Um, it, it took a lot. Yeah. I mean, we did it kind of over a gradual period of time. We right. had a lot of, we had, we knew what we were doing, so we had a lot of time to take our time i guess yeah I, I would definitely i would definitely add i would just emphasize that in you know plan it out give yourself enough time to do it because you don't want to forget something or yeah. something along those lines oh, right you don't want to rush yourself so give yourself enough time right um so once we were getting a good way through our packing we decided that we needed either storage or some place to stage our packed items so right. we didn't live in chaos in our apartment right so we were actually lucky enough to have Clint's aunt have space in her basement. So nice. Thank yeah. you, Dixie, if you're watching. Yes. Um, so we did a lot of carrying back and forth to her house. Yep. Um, once we knew more of our time frame of when we were leaving. And the volume of stuff we had. Right. We decided to just go and get our own storage unit. Right. Um, we were able to get a good deal on one. Right. Um, so then we had a really good staging area for our stuff. And also when you're when you're considering an area to, to stage your things, uh, make sure it is, it is semi-truck accessible. Right, right. Um, so the one thing that we did, and we have kind of done in the past, is that we numbered everything. So our shipping company did tell us every single item needed to be numbered. Every individual Item. So not only every tote, but every single item, a bed frame, a dresser, a chair, everything needed to be numbered. Um, we'll talk about either in the next video or a little bit later what we would do different right. um, if we knew what we did now. Right. So just make sure you number everything. It Most likely you're going to need that to, regardless of the shipping company you're going to, it's for customs so that they can check an inventory and make sure that you're not smuggling goods in. Right. Um, the other thing that we did is mark totes that had fragile items, fragile. Right. So customs people, people loading, whoever, they'll know it's fragile. They'll be more careful, hopefully. Right. Um, the idea with, anyway. with those items. Right. Um, the other thing is electronics and your destination. So I'll let you talk about that sure so one of the other things that's really important when it comes to um particular electronics um, or other kind of more valuable items a lot of countries have limits on what you can import um per person so in other words uh in peru for example they have restrictions on the number of tvs you can import restrictions on the number of computers you can import um things like that so what the shipping company uh required us to do was to not only document that on the inventory, but also keep all of the documentation, like receipts, how much the thing is worth, when you bought it, all those kinds of things uh, available so that the customs agents can, can review that information, make sure it matches the serial numbers on the actual unit, because they actually pull those things aside when they first do their inspection at the port. So it's really, really important that you have a really good idea of what is allowed for you to bring into the country, to your destination country, right. um, because they they will either confiscate things or they will charge you exorbitant fees for um, for bringing in more than a, than a, than what is the limit. Right, and our shipping company was really good and told us this. So yep. um, ask your shipping company; Absolutely. they should have that information. Yep. 
Um, another thing we needed was serial numbers. So for Peru, for example, it, again, it's different probably for every country, but um, pretty much every electronics the things that we found weird were, were fans. Like, right, um, right. Things you wouldn't really expect. Like a box fan. They pulled aside our, our sewing machine. Yep. Yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. So don't pack those things before you have the serial number off the back. Right. And try to hunt down the receipt if you don't have it. Um, for example, we bought a TV in 2010 oh or 2009 yeah. um, that we still have because it works just fine. No reason to get rid of it. Right. But... It looked new to them because we took really good care of our stuff. Right. And we had the receipt saying, no, it's not new. It's from 2009. So right. we would have been charged more if they thought it was brand new and we didn't have that receipt. Right. So, um, for example, at Best Buy, you can go and say, hey, I bought this item around this time frame. They can look and they can print you a new receipt, which is what we did. Yep. So, yep. Um, all right. So the next thing we did was put our stuff in a shipping container. Right, right. So this was quite a ways down the road. Right. I did it. Clint was actually already in Peru. Um, we'll insert pictures and stuff of doing that. We had a lot of help, which is one thing that we recommend. We had a handful of people, mm -hmm. our family, that really helped. So thank if, you. Again, thank if you're you watching, everyone. Yeah. it was amazing, and thank you. So um, do you want to talk about the shipping container specifics? Yeah, so uh, shipping containers, the, the normal sizes are, are two full. One is a 20 foot container and one is a 40 foot container. Um, 40 foot container is like, you know, the size of a trailer that you'd see in a semi going down the highway. 20 foot container was, was more than enough for us. That's about uh, 1,360 cubic feet of space. Um, for us, it fit about four bedrooms worth of, of space. Um, you know, it was, it was really nice. Our shipping company gave us a document that approximated yeah. cubic feet for certain items. So we didn't have to measure our dressers and totes right. and things. So you could just plug in how many of each item you had, and then you could see approximately how much space you needed for a container. Right. And actually, it worked out quite well. The estimate was pretty close to right. what we actually had in the container when, when we got it loaded. And just to give you an example, like Clint said, we have about four bedrooms worth of things. And we filled maybe 75% of a 20-foot container yep. um, packed strategically. Right. So right. Um, our shipping company included three hours to load the container. If we went over that three hours, we paid an extra fee. Right. But we got it done in three hours' time, and it was totally fine. Yep. Um, so packing the shipping container, yeah. we did a little strategically. Yeah. So um, when you when you actually go through the customs process, they're gonna they're gonna have a certain order to thing, order order to things, and also, as I as I mentioned before, there's a certain number of things that are kind of restricted. They want to make sure that they they document when when the shipment arrives. So it makes sense to have those things in front so that they don't have to unload the entire container in order right. to get to those things. So what you want to do, or what we did, was we put furniture and the larger items in the back of the container and then all of the boxes with all of the individual stuff, our electronics and those kind of things in the front so that right when they opened the container, they were right there and they were able to take them out and inspect them. Right. Um, so another thing that we liked with our um, company that we went with is they were really good about providing an itinerary and an estimated time of arrival yeah. for our stuff. Yeah. Um, there's actually GPS that we could log in on a website, yep. see where our boat was, um, when it was expected to arrive. So that way we could plan, since we live in Arequipa, the port is in right outside of Lima. So we would have to fly to Lima to, to start the process once the boat got to port. So it was nice to know an approximation of what was going on. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's definitely helpful to know, and, and the company will give you this usually, I think, um, to know what route it's taking so that you can kind of pack accordingly. If, for example, in our case, you know, it was coming from the Midwest, going through the tropics and arriving at a very high altitude place. So kind of keeping that in mind is, is, uh, is a good idea also when you're packing. Right. Um, and this maybe should have gone previously we're talking about the shipping container, but check your shipping container before you start putting stuff Absolutely. in Absolutely. They should be seaworthy with no cracks or holes, but our container actually did have a crack. Um, so we had to run to the hardware store quick and get some caulk. My dad had to climb over <laughs> a bunch of our boxes to get to the hole so he could caulk the hole. So 
nothing was damaged, so it must right. have worked, but right. it would have been helpful if we would have checked before we started putting stuff in there. And you're going to be liable for any damage to the container when you return it at your right. destination port anyway, so yeah. make sure it's in good, in, in good order. Right. And then the last thing, um, when you're done packing your container, with, there should be a representative from the company or a contracted company. Um, they will watch you close the container. At that point, they should have a seal, mm -hmm. um, which basically shows that it's nothing has been tampered with. Mm -hmm. um, so once it gets to the port, they know that no one's opened that container. Right. Everything that's in there should be what's on the inventory, and if it's not, then you have a problem. Right. Um, in addition to that, just as assurance for yourself, right. we put on locks yeah. on the doors as well. On our container, there was four latches, mm -hmm. four handles to open the doors. The seal was on one, and we put locks on two of the others. Now, when it gets to port, or if there was an inspection, they would break those locks to right. get into it. But at least when you would when you would have connect uh, uh, contact with the container again, you would know that it was it was opened again for an inspection or whatever. They would probably inform you, but this way you would you would know with with certainty. Right. Um, so that's kind of how we did it from start to finish to get us to the shipping point once the container went to the boat. Right. Um, that's kind of the first half of the process, right? right? So I think we'll kind of wrap it up here to not make it so long, and we'll do a part two um, to kind of explain what happened once everything got to Peru. Yep. So uh, we'll wrap it up and start again and see you in that one. See ya.